Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. And welcome. <laughs> you are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at noon, naturally high noon, out of the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood, California, with UBN Radio TV. That's Universal Broadcasting Network. And then every Thursday at 7, Saturday at 1 on my syndicated CNBC News Radio, NBC News Radio Station, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and everywhere now syndicated on iHeartRadio, uh, everywhere from New Mexico to New York and New Jersey. Thank you for all of the love that I get on social media for tuning in on different AM, FM stations with iHeartRadio. And I'm so grateful that this is a show about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal, and no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you could be happy 88% of the time. And as per usual, giving a big peace shout out, peace in, peace out to a number of people, starting with this weekend, I got to cover the Catalina Jazz Tracks Festival, and it was freaking amazing. Three days of amazing jazz from the greats, and I wanted to especially thank Art Good, the brain child of heart and mind and soul, uh, with his festival 31 years now. He's bringing us the best in jazz, Art Good, and he's also a show sponsor, thousands of dollars worth of tickets that he gave away on my Asian Oprah giveaways, and he's already confirmed for next year to do the same thing. So keep it tuned here because you get a ticket and you get a ticket and you get a ticket. So, And I'm so grateful that a lot of my listeners got to uh, enjoy and appreciate them. Uh, shout out to uh, Beverly, whose birthday it was as well. And um, all of my, uh, listen, I can't, uh, there's just like way too many to go through. But uh, I would like a, a special shout out to the magical performers, David Benoit, Mark Antoine, Greg Adams, Tower Power, uh, his, uh, Mark Antoine's beautiful wife, Rebecca, who I met 12 years ago. And it was our first time getting to see her again and it was fabulous and her son <laughs> was this big and he's a gorgeous um, teenager now so peace in and peace out to them as well as a, an amazing 14 year old drummer that played with David Benoit who found him when he was 12 sax officiados um, Gerald Albright Eric Marienthal, a new sensation, Jasmine Ghent, who actually got me to sing <laughs> into her microphone on her saxophone, which was kind of fun. And uh, special thanks to my cameraman, Trevor Floyd. Uh, sorry, I always call him, it's Trevor F. Floyd. Trevor Lloyd, uh, who uh, was a, just a, a wonderful help in helping me uh, tape all the interviews. I would like us to stop for just a moment, though, and take a deep breath in through the nose and release a breath of comfort, peace, and uh, to Trevor's family. His father unexpectedly passed uh, when we got to the island, and he's now in Utah uh, taking care of all of the celebration of his father's life um, activities. So uh, peace in and peace out to you and your family, Trevor, and to Ralph Lloyd, who left uh, an imprint of love and uh, laughter and Trev Trevor's sarcastic sense of humor, <laughs> which I get to enjoy. All right. Uh, also, uh, peace in, peace out to uh, several great customer service on the island, Cartopia and uh, Omar for our golf cart, uh, Celeste at the Lobster Trap, and uh, Jazz Security Phil. 
uh, for the festival as well. Happy birthday to Mike, Rebecca, and Beverly. I uh, One last uh, very great uh, customer service excellence. My I drove Trevor to the airport and my uh, air conditioning in my beautiful little Lincoln went out. And so I was able to get in and out of Caruso, Ford, Lincoln. They take great care of me. Special shout out to Jose and Edith and Ronnie for taking care of me there. All righty. And it is now time for my, oh, I almost forgot. This was uh, would have been bad. Happy belated birthday to my beautiful 83-year-old mom, Rose, my nine-year-old niece, beautiful niece Rachel in Toronto and my incredible 18 year old Sarah Way, my heart, who got a nice surprise party from her favorite mom. We surprised her and uh, thank you to, uh, where is she? It is, her name is Ariel for doing the taping of that surprise party. Uh, For all of the help, all of her friends that made that M- evening magical when she turned 18 and if you see her cake it says uh, happy legal to get scratchers day <laughs> so that's that all right and it's time for my special guest and he is flying in from denver and as usual when there's uh, flights involved you just never know but i will introduce him now and then i will get to uh, read one of his books as we are uh, setting up for him. Uh, I will tell you he's uh, from Col- Colorado based. He's an author who's published a growing series of children's books called Conscious Bedtime Stories Club. Is already garnering public notice and industry accolades, including four Mom's Choice Awards for Excellence Gold Medals for The Boy Who Searched for Silence, The Hug That Got Stuck. The Elephant Who Tried to Tiptoe, and The Laughing Witch. So he has this brilliant idea that the last 20 minutes before bedtime are some of the most precious with your children, and he wanted to celebrate that. So he's come up with an entire book series, and he's probably one of my first guests who I, in my introduction of him on social media, saying he's my my guest next week, has had the most uh, uh, endorsed comments of I love his books and uh, they're wonderful and so we're going to give him a warm welcome uh, and applause so I know he's checked in so he's on his way but here's to Andrew Newman <laughs> Yay! and perfect timing he's right here that was your applause <laughs> I love the timing I just knew you were here and we just kept going as if you were going to be here. So good to what see you. To All right. So there's your mic. And if you would grab those cans Thank and you. put them on your head. Fabulous. And uh, we just you just got your uh, applause. And why don't you sit up as close as you can and sort of eat that thing. Perfect. Yes. And, and uh, all the way from Denver, Colorado, flew in just for today. And I'm grateful for that. And so let's just start right up into what? Okay, I, I, got I haven't done this in a while. I have a friend. She doesn't have an answering machine. She has a questioning machine. And when you call her, she says, who are you and what do you want? So, Andrew <laughs> Newman, who are you and what do you want? <laughs> oh, wow. Well... You know, I'm just a guy who's had a, had a, a personal path of healing and a, and a real curiosity to study healing. And I've noticed that kids, everyone who came through my healing practice and my, my therapy practice was dealing with an issue that started before they were six years old. Uh-huh. And so what I want is to be able to bring some narrative um, that's uh, true to the times for morals and values and ethics. I want to help parents connect with their children in the last 20 minutes of the day uh, so that we can grow esteem and confidence in the kids. Fabulous. That's fabulous. Now, I'm sorry, but your accent does not sound like Colorado. It's, <laughs> it's from Texas. <laughs> No, yeah, uh, sarcasm. Cape, Cape Town, South Africa. It's Cape Town, South yeah, Africa. Yeah, I'm an, a, an apartheid yeah. baby, and uh, my final year of high school, Nelson Mandela got released. <gasps> so I, wow. I grew up with all of the influences and the peculiarities of that era. 
Wow. And then when did you come to the States? I've been here two and a half years. Two and a half years. And what prompted that? Well, I got lucky. I won a green card in the green card lottery. Wow. If you didn't know that there's such a thing, there really is. Wow. Or there was. Uh -huh. I, whether it lasts, oh. we'll wait to see. Oh, oh, no comment there. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I, I took that as a uh, divine providence and yes. a clear sign to, <laughs> to come and have an American experience. That's beautiful. Do you miss anything about South Africa? Well, being back here today in L.A. and being at the seaside, no. I've, it's been nourishing. But that's uh, living in Colorado, the one thing that I miss. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And, and if you don't mind, I am so excited. I actually wanted to be able to read mm -hmm. one of the favorite ones that, and, and it's so lovely. He sent, he pre-sent all of his books. So I have all of his books and I will be giving some away, the ones that I don't want to yeah, keep. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for the Asian Oprah giveaway. But I thought instead of talking about the books that we would experience, my favorite, and, it's, and I used to love going, I was the volunteer that always wanted to go read to children. And I actually have a children's book. I know this show's about you, but I just uh, wanted to say. I mentioned I'm some crayons. Uh, yeah, if I yeah, <laughs> yes. The uh, Mommy, What Are Feelings? Right, and my brilliant. daughters did all of the um, coloring. And you can actually not purchase them anymore. I'm sold out. So I'm waiting for, uh, thank you, I'm waiting for uh, uh, my next book to come out next August, uh, Eight Ways to Happiness. And then that should j garner enough interest in other publishers to uh, pick that one up. And bring the kids story out again. Yes. Fabulous. So, but this is the hug that got stuck. And, and, and how do you come up with these titles? Because they're brilliant. Like the, the bee who could not choose his flower, the, the forgetful elephant. Right. <laughs> right. The boy who searched for silence. Well, the stories tend to come to me more than me sitting down to write them. And they always come out of a community experience. The boy who searched for silence, I had done a four-day silent retreat. And I got this familiar knock, knock, knock on the inside. Uh -huh. And I'd like, go and get my pen. Uh -huh. And the story arrives almost fully formed. Right. And, um, and uh, of course... In many ways, I'm the key character in each <laughs> in each book. Of um, course, <laughs> right? I've Nothing I've wrong had with that. I've had a stuck hug before, and we'll see what that's about now. Yes, yes, that's beautiful. And if you've just tuned in and you're wondering why I'm holding a book in my hand, I have award-winning author Andrew Newman on the air, live in studio, all the way from South Africa via Denver, via LAX, <laughs> over here to uh, share his beautiful books with us. So I'm, I'm going to read this. This is The Hug That Got Stuck, and we'll see how long it takes. And I Marissa, you know I'm not going to let you skip over the snuggle breathing, which starts the story time. And so let, us, let me take us oh through that quickly. Please. Breathing in, I breathe for me. Okay. Yeah. I breathe for you. I breathe for us, yeah. and I breathe for all that surrounds us. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank we you. We want mum and kids to settle for story time. We want the connection to open, the phones to go away, the distractions that of whatever they've still got to do mm. after they've tucked the little ones in. Mm. And this is the doorway, that little uh, breathing practice. The little practice. breathing. Isn't yeah. that funny? Because, you know, I teach uh, balanced Tai Chi Gong, and right. it's all around the breath. And that's how we start. And, and you, you, you hold it perfectly. Oh, thank you. All right. Once upon a time, on a very ordinary day, deep in the center of a very ordinary heart, an extraordinary thing happened. Cue the music. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Beautiful artwork. Deep in the center of this heart was a hug factory. The hug factory made the most warm, cozy, cuddly hugs. Look at the beautiful hug factory. And there's a whole, you know, the, the yes. hug, baby hugs are growing oh, yeah, deep in the center sweet, of the heart. Sweet. <laughs> hydroponically drip-fed by stardust, rainbow light, and warm fuzzy feelings. Wow. Each hug was freshly made and specially encoded with just the right amount of love and care to delight the heart it was made for. My personal hugs. Being a hug wasn't always easy. Sometimes a lonely thought or bad feeling would trap a hug into a sticky web. He's and trapped. if you look into that web, you'll see things like, nobody loves me. 
horrible. Oh, I'm Who not good cares? enough. I'm not good enough. Ooh, <sighs> lonely. Mm. <laughs> so to help hugs deliver their love and care, there was a big sign on the factory wall. Reminders to being a great hug. Number one, breathe in love to glow brightly. <sighs> Two, focus entirely on the heart the love is for. And three, don't pay too much attention to the web of sticky thoughts. On most days, you could see streams of hugs entering and leaving the door of the heart, zooming away like bees from a hive, but not on this day. On this day, there was a problem. One special hug on its way out of the heart got stuck. Very, very stuck. Oh, <gasps> oh the web says, who cares? Anxious, horrible. This hug had forgotten the third rule. Uh-oh. It fought against the web of sticky thoughts to get free, but every wiggle and squirm trapped the hug even more. Soon the hug ran out of breath and lost its glow. Inside, the heart became horribly congested with crowds of hugs waiting to get out. Unused hugs were put into boxes until every inch of space was filled up. Inventory, hug inventory. <laughs> Outside the heart, there was also a problem. A traffic jam of visiting hugs couldn't get in to deliver their special love and care. Yikes, crisis. Soon the factory stopped making new hugs. Oh, no. Oh. It's getting dark. There was only one stuck hug in the center of one ordinary heart, but all around the world. Hugs lost a little of their glow. The end. No. <laughs> Never the end. Never the end. The hug sighed helplessly. It stopped wriggling, stopped squirming, and stopped fighting. In that moment, something magical happened. As it stopped wriggling, it breathed in love and glowed brighter. As it stopped squirming, it remembered the heart it was made for. As it stopped fighting, it slipped right past the web of sticky thoughts. Woohoo! Free! Free! Woo! Let's do a little applause on the free! Yay! It's never had that. <laughs> <laughs> The hug glowed brighter and brighter, zooming away toward the one special heart it was made for. Mm, I wonder whose that is. The hug factory clinked and whirled back to life. A flood of hugs passed in and out of the heart, each delivering their special love and care. It was just one hug who got unstuck in the center of one ordinary heart, and all around the world, an extraordinary softening happened. The end. The. Where's the the end? The end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the the end. Oh, then you have like a debrief on it. Yeah, How we, beautiful we have a hug that? meter at the back. And, wow. Um, we need four hugs a day for survival. We need eight hugs a day for maintenance. We need 12 hugs a day for growth. Virginia Satir. She's That's the founder so of great. Family Therapy, right? Ah. And um, in the early 60s, she, she came up ah. with that quote. And if you've, ever, if you've ever counted, firstly, it's a lot of fun to count, right. particularly if you've got other friends counting with you. Right. Um, and then you can get your hug count up to 12, and it's like... Can we do it in studio? Yes. I well, you have to come over to my 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 uh hug. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Actually, we'll do a special one. Heart to I'll go to oh, his mic this time. Heart, yeah. No, 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 go to the, yeah. It's heart to heart. heart when to I heart. do balance tai chi gong, it's always heart to heart. There we go. Heart to heart, lift heart to, to lift. Heart. Yeah, Beautiful. that's how people know that they've taught with uh, learned with me. And I did that on purpose because all of these shows go to YouTube. And I would love it if my listeners actually let me read their children a bedtime story. And you can just click that part out. I'm going to actually, I'm going to edit it. So I'll have a whole show. And I'm going to take that out and send it to it. my friends. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Lots, that's lots of stories for you to read. Yeah, absolutely. I love, I just love, what a wonderful, no wonder you, I, I was telling w before you got in that, um, you know, I always announce my guest right after the show of the the week before and you're the first one where people were like 
I love his books. I read his books. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like, wow, we don't need to do any promo here. <laughs> well, they're finding their way out into the world. We're a very young business. We have our first subscribers who have chosen to take a book a month. And I really, for parents who want to, um, who want to want to support this particular value in their home, yeah, uh, you know, it's not. It, it's just like a New Year's a New Year's resolution. It'll be it'll be d forgotten by the fifteenth of January unless right. there's some structure in place. Right. And so, th so the subscription offers that structure. But of course, lots of people just come into ConsciousStories.com and and choosing their favorites. Right. Um, the right message for the child at the right time. Like if you're dealing with choice in and y your little one needs to work out how to make better decisions, then the bee who could not choose his flower. Ah. Um, in fact, we've changed the gender because I learned that it's the female bees who go looking for pollen. So uh, it's the bee who could not choose her flower oh. from now on so that I'm, so that I'm educating correctly along right. the way <laughs> at the same right. time. Right, good, good job. Mm -hmm. Good job. It's always better. W women are always better, anyways. But that's another show. <laughs> we, we can we can talk about <laughs> we can talk about men's work and the dialogue. I think it's going to be a book that comes out of that one. The woman, the, the 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 girl who thought she was better <laughs> than the boy. Right. <laughs> right. Well, it, well, and 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 you know that brings up the issue of comparison, and 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 kids are doing comparison all the time. Yes. And um, the elephant to try to tiptoe is the story that speaks to comparison, particularly on a body consciousness level. Mm. Because um, you know, kids have to love themselves the way that they are. And not only kids, actually. I mean, it's our work, isn't right, it? Right, right. It's our work. H honey, I'm not a kid, but I still have that issue. Right. Yeah. I, I say constantly, if I could see myself half as beautiful as people say they see me, I am golden. Right. But I still wake up with fat and ugly attacks, like not all the time, <laughs> but but more often than I really want to, for sure. Right. You and know, and that's, so uh, that's going to eat into your 88%, isn't is it? It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you did your homework. Uh, absolutely. And, and, and it does. What age would you say, because you have uh, a barrage of experience with children, at what age do you think or have you seen them start that comparison road? I think it's very young. Yes. I mean, I'd say I'd say certainly by three it's happening. Really? And okay, and I thought it was later, well but it that's okay. It also okay. depends on the sensitivity of the child. And in a certain way, because I was a sensitive child who didn't really get recognized as that with and didn't have a, a background that um, that would ever have nurtured me as to be the healer, mm. um, I, I understand that for some kids, things go right in and the comparison can go like really deep right. into them. It can affect their self-esteem. It can affect their confidence. Right, they have right, these right. little moments in the day where they have almost a, almost a micro depression because the comparison happens. Mm -hmm. They see somebody is better than me. Right. And then, then the material of shame and guilt is, is just queued up, ready to run. Yeah. And, um, and this, is, this is, if they go to sleep on that, uh, it, it, it's let's coded. Let's just it's say coded. it's coded. That's yeah, a great yeah. way of saying it. Yeah. They wake up the next morning and their esteem level is not what it could be. Right. Um, because there's this, this belief system that's in the way of it. Mm. And and all that it takes to heal those little micro depressions is mm -hmm. beautiful connection. Mm -hmm. And when, when mom or dad comes in lovingly, the parents, parents get to sit alongside their children. Story time is something that happens with your child, not to your child. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the, the, so, and so that different posturing is really supportive yeah. for, um, for for kids just feeling like they belong and that they're safe to be themselves. Yeah, yeah. I just had this great idea. I'm looking for a sponsor right now. Wouldn't it be beautiful if somebody out there who is maybe of retirement age and they have a little, they have money set aside and they want to do something meaningful with even like a couple thousand dollars is my thought is to buy a subscription for children who are in foster care, mm -hmm. in um, adopted, uh, in the homes, in any kind of homes in LA County or in Denver or wherever it is that you would hook up with Andrew and partner to make sure that those places have a book a month. I, I would wouldn't absolutely that, love that. And wouldn't that be awesome that children that young who have had some a little trauma already that that doesn't begin to shape their life that way right. that, that they can focus on what is working and where the love is yes 
I, I'm challenging. I just know that there's somebody out there who's listening, who's been waiting for something meaningful to do, because I always like to do that on the air, is give people meaningful things to do. So I, I would like to challenge. I, I can't wait to see who steps up to that. So for whoever does that and um, contacts me, message or my website, the number four, balance.org, I'm going to give them the the choice of books that they would like to take from my collection yeah. how's that uh, uh, that's beautiful yeah. and and, yeah. and and i will support this with as many books as 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 we can as a business i also want to say uh, um there are so many um teachers who come past well, yeah, i do i do little farmers market stands and that mm. gives me a great opportunity to meet with people yes and and teachers are, are taking money out of their own wallets to buy books and resources for their mm. classroom mm -hmm. um we need to support those teachers. Yes. I have uh, a teaching aid that goes with each book um, that, that makes it easy for them to take it into the classroom. Um, so many t teachers are overwhelmed by their workload. Yeah, and so yeah. anything we can do to make it um, easier. Absolutely. Are you doing like um, library tours? I, I haven't started with with libraries. I've done a few in my local region. Okay. Uh, similarly with um, uh, with schools in the local uh, okay. local Boulder, uh, Denver area. Okay. Okay. Because I, I, I totally see that. Car Karen. Let's sign me up. I'm, I'm uh, in. Okay. Right, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's funny because Karen had a dream about me doing book tours. I'm having the same kind of you know visioning that this is total totally because this is when it needs to start. So what I, I was asking you the question because it's career days that I go to. Mm. I love warping young minds and I've been doing it ever since my kids were young. And I noticed that even kids who are born in non-dysfunctional homes, healthy homes, right. you know, we live in a nice area in Seal Beach and most of the, the families are, n I wouldn't consider dysfunctional, um, but the national average is seven out of 10. Oprah says eight out of 10 as high as 93% in dysfunctional homes. Right. And it seems that it shows up, even in healthy homes, around 10, when kids have that voice that begins to tell them that they're not good enough, they're not worthy, they're too sensitive, there's something wrong with them. Right. So, But if you're saying it's as early as three, well, well, then we're... Regardless of when it starts, mm. we've got to provide the antidote for it as young as possible. Co correct. Correct. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. So so there's no chance for that to take root. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. So so tell me, I'm going to do a little quiz on your books. Yes, <laughs> let's do it. So, so the elephant who tried to tiptoe is good for children who are starting to compare themselves to others. Right. Right. When we want them to learn to, to love the body they have. Okay. And then the silence, you, you mentioned that that came because of your silent retreat. It, it, it is a meditative journey, but the quest that the boy goes on is to find silence because he struggles with the noises of everyday life. Ah. And uh, there's confusion, advertisements, programs, instructions, and advice. Right. And he goes looking outside of himself, can't find it, um, sets up a, a anger and despair and helplessness. Mm. And through the act of surrender, he falls inwards mm. and he lands right into silence. Interesting. So Interesting. it maps the root that that almost that every time I sit from. down for mm -hmm. a meditation, right. I go through that that route, um, and then I fall inwards. There's always a little resistance. There's always a little frustration. Right. And then there's this landing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and silence. I I want silence to be a friend. Yes. For, because there's so much of like sit in the corner and be quiet is so right. different to 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 let's silence. So let's breathe into the silence mm. and connect with who we really are. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, I just looked at the time. I didn't even see your uh, your tag here for it's time to thank the sponsor of today's show. Uh, so we'll be back in two and two. Peace in and peace out. Mm. Want to shop with some free champagne in hand? Ha! I got your attention. Yes, join me at the Lakewood Country Club November 1st through 4th for another timeless Treasures pop-up boutique. Over 120 artisans and craftspeople will have everything you need to make your home holiday beautiful. Free parking, admission, coffee, 
music as usual, and a free gift as usual for the first 44 who mentioned Dr. Marissa. For more information, go to TimelessTreasuresBoutiques.com. And thank you so much, Dawn, for being a fabulous sponsor on my show. We'll give her a little applause. And it's really lovely. My, my other mom, Dolores, is actually uh, four, uh, 84, and she makes all of her arts and crafts, and that's how I got Dawn to be a sponsor, because she's there. Please go visit them November 1st through 4th at the Lakewood Country Club. And today... We are so blessed to have an award-winning children's book author on the air with me today, Andrew Newman. You are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon here out of the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood, California at Universal Broadcasting Network, radio and TV, and then syndicated and repeated every Saturday at 1, Thursday at 7, syndicated on CNBC, NBC News Radio Channel, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5. It is the home of Dave Ramsey and Stephanie Miller as well. And then on iHeartRadio all the time. Just Google Dr. Marissa and you will find me splattering hope and happiness all over you. Andrew Newman has won. Tell me about your awards. Well, we won the, the Best Series Award from the Moonbeam um, uh, Award Program and then uh, the Mum's Choice Awards uh, gold medalist for, uh, for the four stories that we started um, the collection with, which are you, you just we've just looked at the first two of them. You've read The Hug and the fourth one, and that is The, the Laughing Witch. <laughs> and she's helping <laughs> kids connect with sacred space and nature and... Uh, we have lots of those heading out this Halloween. Oh, uh, I'm sure. I Actually, the first promo that I clip-arted together, I had a picture of you, a picture of me, a picture of your books, and this picture. But it ended up beside me, and I said, I am not going to say that I'm the laughing witch. <laughs> so I made a new one. Right. <laughs> so yeah, she's too green. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, she's cute, yeah. but uh, no, which is not what I necessarily want to aspire to. So what is your what is your hope for, uh, so personally, um, do, you, are, do you have children? I, I don't have children. These are my babies. Actually. These are your yes. babies, okay. Yeah. Uh, one day? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Sorry. I'm, I'm digging now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, your job. That, that is my job. <laughs> that and, and I'm trying to figure out how I can make you cry now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. The stories can do that occasionally, not only for me, but uh, I often, the thing about creativity is, is anyone who's made something will know that, that once you've made two or three things and the first thing you made no longer feels good enough. Um, which mm -hmm. is kind of funny. And so I, r I rely on the readers to come back to me and go, wow, that, uh, that story still really, that really yes. touched me. And I go, oh, yes, I remember how I felt when I made it. Yeah, and so that sounds a, like a little bit of a perfectionist in there. Uh, I certainly have that. S okay, you and, resemble and, and what a learning process. Like, I don't come from a publishing background. I mean, I'm a fourth-generation retail jeweler with, 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 with diamond grading diplomas and, and marketing and then all sorts of other things that I've done. Interesting. And, and but it's been my, my, through my training at healing schools that my creativity got nourished as an adult. Mm. It wasn't deeply nourished as a child. I learned that I was creative um, in my 30s and um, trusted the process mm. once I started writing. And like you, 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 you and your daughters uh, create a little story, right? Yes, and, yes. And so many parents are saying to me, oh, I've got a story. And I'm like, just do it. Yeah. Let's go. go. Let's get out there and make yeah, it. Yeah, there is a writer in everyone. There is a story in everyone. And artistry is not just for artists. I think that if we, um, you know, th it's not just a special little group of uh, hypersensitive, <laughs> highly creative <laughs> people. I think everyone has that little bit of writing or acting or I, all of my clients, I tell them, the th you know, the three healing emotions are love, peace, and creativity. I, I love that. So, yes. In fact, you should know that because I just read that you opened for Deepak Chopra somewhere. I did. That's he, pretty huge. That was a, it was a great event in my life. He yes. was speaking at the, the Oregon Convention Center. And uh, I spoke on children being the future of well-being. Mm. And uh, because it's really, uh, they are. They're going to be our leaders. Right. They're going to be our right, thinkers. Right, right, and right. Um, 
and they come in, well, I, I, I'm cautious about the language, but they, they seem to have uh, levels of wisdom that keep evolving mm. and that, that three, four, five-year-olds are, 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 are really tapped in in a way that I know I wasn't. Right, and, uh, right. And then they get confused if the world doesn't support that. Right. And so, and so here's and one of the told ways. They're told there's something wrong with them right. instead of there's something very right with them. I still think that many levels and many kinds of autism are uh, uh, tapping into a gift that we don't necessarily recognize in right. the mainstream, which is, uh, and, it's, and it's more and more, so we better have some way of looking at it instead of that it's a problem because right. it's uh, prevalent now. And in, in, in the African villages, the, the, the child who has this sort of, sort of slightly different disposition is typically recognized as a healer. And, they're, and they're supported and they're, their presence is, 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 uh, is really recognized. Mm -hmm. In a positive way. Yeah, absolutely. Instead of a, yeah, it's interesting. Not here, at least not now, but we are shifting. We are recognizing. I think Rain Man was one of the, the great you uh, know, Dustin first movies yeah. that uh, sort of showed that side, uh, that the, there's brilliance. And I think we are, you know, especially I think the millennials are helping us recognize the value in diversity. And for that, I, I am truly grateful. We're, we are really coming into a, a balanced uh, side. So, I, so, I, so knowing you're spiritual and I'm spiritual, yes. and for those of you who've stumbled on my show and are not real clear, on um, on the difference. So this book actually says the prayer who searched for God. This story is written in Israel during an interfaith peace camp that I was part of uh, the leadership team of. Mm. So uh, this is this is typically how the stories come for me. And their community experiences. I mean, Israel for all its troubles is just such a deeply um, uh, spiritual place. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter which path you're on. Mm -hmm. um, so, so t for you, so did you grow up with God? I grew up with a, uh, with an Anglican church upbringing. Okay, and so at what point did did you tap into something th that's a little different or the same or deeper? R really late twenties. Okay. Um, I mean, for many people, the the there's a big tra transition between twenty nine and thirty two, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that that for me was when the door opened to. Uh, to healing, uh, it was first Reiki, and then um, that I wanted more, more science and more psychology, which is why I studied further. Mm -hmm. So, so help me help those who might be, and there's a lot of listeners because I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a religious show, mm. and I, I wear my spiritual coat every once in a while, um, but I don't, you know, I'm not advocating. Everybody j does know that I'm on faculty at Agape. International Spiritual Center, and I sing in the choir, blah, 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 and my big brother is Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. But for for someone else who, you know, you're on this healing journey, what does that mean? Well, it, it means uncovering um, more of oneself. And it, and again, we're then talking about the layers that got put over us as kids that we started to misinterpret the world and in some way shrunk. Mm. Uh, back from expressing our own unique um, essence, mm -hmm. w we're all we're all completely unique individuals, right. and um, and and it serves all of us to for for each one to be living their their truth. So so if we use the books as a as a a springboard, so a child, let's say a child in our generation, even though I'm ageless. But <laughs> <laughs> in our plus more generations, we grew up, you know, basically as children, we we feel good. Right. You s watch a child play. You know, they're not punished for falling. They're learning how to walk and they they're celebrated when they actually, you know, figure out how to walk and they start to talk and they're celebrated for how they're talking. And then somewhere around there, if they make choices that are not what their parents want, they begin uh, embracing the message of. Um, no, you cannot do this. You cannot say that. Mm. And when you do that, you're bad. Right. It's right. Not, it's not OK to be myself. It's not OK to be myself. And that has that describes probably, I would say, 99 percent of the children growing up in our traditional society. Right. And parent right? parenting was 
um, controlling in its nature. And, and that's evolving. Yes. Well, I saw one of your your um, endorsements was a friend of mine who's been on the show as Dr. well. Dr. Sapoli. Su- no, uh, Susie Lula. Susie Lula, of yes, course. Yes, yes. So, so peace in, peace out. Hi, Susie. Um, so, so what we're discovering now as adults, it, when I teach the Tai Chi, we do the butterfly form, which is to dispel the lie that there's something wrong with us to dispel the lie that we're not good enough and that we are each uniquely beautiful in our own color and pattern. So so we have to undo all of those messages that we got, okay? So it's like if we start early with the message that there is nothing wrong with you and that you are unique in your talent, gift, and ability and you don't have to do something that you don't want to do, and that you don't, you're not a failure if you do not become a, um, a, a performing success right. or a uh, NFL football player, and that any or or a um, you know a, a multi-billionaire businessman, but that <laughs> that that there's so much success to be had at all levels with who you are exactly as you are. Right, and f- and for me, success is about. Um, growing into how I want to be, not what I want to do, mm. and mm. and that that distinction was never made um, in in my in my education. But uh, the, the term emotional literacy was only coined in the eighties, so so it's a real currency now that that's coming through schools that the teachers are working with, the educators are talking right. to kids, you know, so that children are in touch with their emotions and the ability to express them and communicate them right. without necessarily acting them out. Right. Even though acting out's going to happen because, well, hey, we're kids, you know. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And, and what's interesting is the whole BS, the belief system, that I'm your parent and I know what's best and I'm here to teach you what is best so that you can do well in life, that's not necessarily true. No. And, right. the, and the person who, who has the best narrative around this for me is still uh, Dr. Shafali. She's uh, Oprah's go-to yes. on conscious parenting. Yes. And she's just got this incredible way of, of uh, explaining how uh, there's a partnership. Children are here to help us awaken. Right. And, right. and when, they're, when they're in the supermarket going, I want candy or having their tantrum, mm-hmm. m- my response as an adult is m- it's my opportunity. It's like this is a meditative moment. Let me see if I can hold my composure. Yes. I don't know if I'll be able to on at this time, but I'm, I'm, I'm engaged in the practice mm-hmm. so that I can still relate um, w- with kindness to them mm-hmm. as opposed to... Uh, aggression or separation. Mm-hmm. What what is the the solution in those cases? Well, this is the, it's a practice. Yes, this is, this is truly like like sitting on a meditation mat. Yes, yes. So 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 you don't take the child away, or you don't. Well, you you're gonna you're gonna work moment by moment on, on that. You know, sometimes you've got the the muscle in yourself as a parent to mm-hmm. to take the deep breaths and to just stay with them whilst they work through the process that they're in. Mm-hmm. Um, other times. Uh, you, you might make a choice to take them, uh, take you know, go and sit on a car and just just create a little bit more space so that it mm-hmm. the, the energy of the the, the anger mm-hmm. or the vent can 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 have its space and then it's gone. Right. It's like I, I, I volunteered uh, many years ago on a baboon rehabilitation sanctuary <laughs> in South Africa <laughs> just to throw that in. I would um, love to do that. And and the thing about them is they're they're like uh, the alpha male sits there and he goes wow, and then it's done uh-huh. it doesn't matter the next minute the same the same baboon that he was chasing away from the orange you know can come and uh, come and uh, pick uh, pick fleas off him and he's happy <laughs> so, so it, it's just like this instantaneous thing that kids kids have energy that moves through them they've got to express it mm-hmm. um, and then and then it if it's allowed to it will pass right right that's my balance tool int bod i-n-t-b-o-a-d it's not that big of a deal. There we go. Yeah, or this too shall pass. Right. Easy, easy said, but it is <laughs> it is a new thing. I keep meaning to invite her on the show, so thank you for the reminder. Yes. You're going to have to She'd keep reminding that. me. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. So your parents, what do they think about all this? 
My parents have both passed. They ah, passed okay. uh, a number of years ago. Okay. Um, and in a certain way, they've enabled me to do this. Uh, um, bypassing. Bypassing, <laughs> I know. It's a strange <laughs> okay. thing to say, but it's... No, no, I hear you. I hear you. You know, both in terms of... Um, personal accountability. I don't, I'm not account. I'm accountable to myself. Right. Right. And right. Um, and. Uh, well, I'm sure they're very proud of you from where they are. Yeah, they watched this emerging happy. in the early days, and Did the stories they? were a great joy to them. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad that you got to see that. And they were them. very confused. They were like, "Who are you, and where did you come from?" But <laughs> 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 this is not how I raised you. <laughs> no, it was, no, it wasn't like it wasn't like that at okay. all. But the, but uh, 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 my mum had a very deep spiritual heart, and my dad was very creative, mm. Um, mm. and he applied that creativity into designing uh, jewelry. Uh, right, right, and the um, diamonds. Yes, the diamonds. Do you have siblings? I have a sister back in Cape okay. Town is in she, South Africa. Is she Africa. doing the diamonds? The no, family business. No, She's not either, no, huh? No, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, somebody called me a jeweler of souls, and I thought, oh, that's I thought, mm, lovely. I, that's like you're that setting them. You're setting them up, right? Right. Yeah, you're we you're can helping do that. putting the setting around them. Yeah, yeah. And that's a that's beautiful. I haven't seen it that way. Yeah, yeah. You're 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 setting up the children, and the parents. Well, and yeah. that's right. We 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 we've um. We could we're write. We kindness, could write. Right? We could co-write one. I would love uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> with the diamond. It's all about diamonds, right? Well, diamond, <laughs> the facets of life, right? Yes, yes. I, the, the latest download I got was when someone's irritating you, I used to say, you know, they're like the oyster that uh, covers the, mm. the irritating sand, like making a pearl, right? right. They're a pearl maker. Right. My latest one is asking yourself, what is the polish in the rub? Mm. So when someone's rubbing you the wrong way, what is being polished in you? Beautiful. On you. Yeah, that could be a good book too. Now you got me all thinking. <laughs> yeah. I know what color I want, <laughs> but that would be lovely. And I that think that if lovely. we had, uh, you know, I get a lot of ideas being offered to me by by readers and, sure. and and listeners, and and again, my encouragement goes to to write them. Right. You know, write them and right. and and really, you can. Um, when I first wrote the first book, was was a little light, and it was literally me with my journal. Just uh, just going for a walk and oh wow I've got a poem mm. and I think it needs some pictures and it was no more complicated than that um, and I, and it, I had four stories before I thought about mm -hmm. about building a collection before I thought about selling anything it wasn't my intention my intention right, right. was to express my own creativity and beautiful uh, and as parents you get to your kids are doing it all the time so they they can also really um, encourage you to do it and beautiful you can have this little family bookshelf of things you created together and that, isn't that beautiful isn't that beautiful i'm just uh, looking on my my facebook to see if there are any questions for you because oh. we're coming uh, to the very end but my last question usually with guests is um who are who or what are you grateful for that mm. uh, got you to this place well well we've touched on some of those my parents just mm -hmm. a minute ago yep and what were their names? Brian and Sheena. Brian and Sheena. Yeah. Thank you. And so my sister is Kirsty yeah. and um, good Scottish name. Mm -hmm. And um, is that where you are, Scottish? Uh, I'm Afro-Celtic, so half Scottish, <laughs> half African. <laughs> Afro-Celtic. Okay. <laughs> and um, I think there's a music genre. Um, yes. How do you say um, thank you in in your language? In, in Afrikaans, yes, it would be Afrikaans. Buy a donkey. Buy a donkey. I like it. Uh, I can remember that because well it done. sounds like buy a donkey, right? Yes, buy, yes, a donkey. buy a donkey. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> All right. Buy a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll teach you the Chinese, which Please? is xie xie. Xie xie. Yeah, not S-H-I-T. It's xie xie. Xie xie. That's Mandarin. Very good. Very good. Ah, I yes. learned something new. Yes. So what else would you, who else would you like to uh, thank well, and, besides and your then, mother? And then the... the um, particularly the teachers that I had that helped me unfold my creativity. Mm. And there was a whole school of them, but the school was organized by a lady called Dr. Barbara Brennan. And um, she's best known for a book called Hands of Light mm. and um, an incredible NASA physicist who, who got interested in healing and, and, and put the two worlds together of physics and healing, which is absolutely amazing. Fabulous, and, fabulous. And, 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 the, and the, then, the, then the, 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 you know, the, the clients who came to to see me when I was learning to be a healer and when I was running a therapy practice. They're my true teachers. Um, and uh, uh, just such gratitude to them for uh, for trusting me with, um, with supporting them on their journey. Fabulous. 
Mr. Andrew Newman, you get Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award. Ooh. Not given to everyone. I love what you're doing with the children. And uh, you can find him at www.consciousstories.com. And uh, please do subscribe. And if you are uh, interested in helping him provide these books to the uh, homes or anywhere where children are not given necessarily a uh, perfect start, uh, then uh, contact me at forbalance.org and you will get all of the books that he gave me that I'm not keeping. <laughs> and that's your Asian Oprah giveaway, even if it's uh, one place that you're going to set it up, uh, small, you know, whatever investments you, you make would be wonderful because I think I would like not just to give it away, but give you a chance to give back. All right, and that is it. Thank you so much for coming to the studio, Andrew Newman. Such a pleasure. I don't know if we uh, already applause, but you just get so many more extra applause. Thank, thank you so you. much, thank Marissa, you. for thank your you. work and your presence here. Absolutely, absolutely. And it is time for The Balance Bar, where I invite you to step up at the end of the show to join me in the places that I'll be balancing. Uh, first is everywhere, November 1st, round 77 of the 21 day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa. Now we're into the five digits of thousands of people who are not or try not to complain 21 consecutive days in a row. Please do get the app. It's only 99 cents on both stores created by teenagers in order to help you challenge other people, posts, uh, all, all of that kind of good stuff. And it houses all of the tips, the daily tips as long as well as the videos and has some funny sounds that come up when you are a complainer or spend the whole day not complaining. So that is uh, for the 21 Day Fast, November 1st. And this weekend, join me at the Digital Footprints Conference in LA at the Sheraton uh, LAX Hotel. It, you can register and get a $297 free admission for $1.00. Uh, if you go to digitalfootprints.net uh, uh, and just put in City Gala 2018, thanks to Ryan Long's work with nonprofits, you not only get in for a dollar, it includes meals as well, and seeing me and saying hi and getting a little shot with my microphone for you. Uh, you also get fabulous speakers. Greg Reed, who did the Travolta dance, um, great speaker. Uh, David Corbin, another great speaker. Uh, the Ugg Boots founder, Brian Smith, and Priceline.com, Paul Hoffman, the co-founder, who I consider all fabulous people that I've gotten to flash peace with and do some interviews with. So join me this weekend. And again, go to digitalfootprints.net, use City Gala 2018 in the promo code, and you'll get in for a dollar. I've also been invited to speak on Soldier Field in Chicago next week. Um, all my Chicago area listeners, please do get your tickets at journeysdream.org. It's also an event bright. I might be singing, but I'm definitely moderating a panel there, highlighting solutions for mental illness, which is a, a, a topic very near to my heart. Two of my most important years of my life were spent as a assistant manager at Hillview Mental Health Hospital, where I learned how fragile the human mind is and how precious life is. So please do join me there. November 9th, I have been booked and invited to speak at the USC Youth Mentorship Panel uh, with X Factor YouTuber Emmanuel Kelly and many more. Get your tickets uh, for that. Uh, you can go to Henning Morales' uh, Facebook page, great uh, filmmaker, and I'll be there on panel. Uh, get your tickets. And and those of you who know that I taught at UCLA in the MBI school, do not go back and say that I'm teach I'm, I'm speaking at USC. Uh, also locally teaching in Seal Beach on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Balanced Tai Chi Gong, promoting inner peace one breath at a time. We had a fabulous class yesterday. Uh, so Mondays at 6, join you at the pier in Seal Beach. You can go to my meetup uh, to for more information. Finally, if you get would like to work with me on the beach because you know that you deserve 
more hope and happiness. Uh, I have a couple of spots left for my 2018. I could, uh, because of my schedule, as you know, I only have a certain number of slots. So I am um, giving out free balance assessments to see if we're a fit. So please do contact me any way you can. Uh, the number four balance.org is the easiest. And next week, a special treat for you. We have Dr. David, sorry, Dr. Davina Kotulski. And I always am a little nervous about pronouncing her name, but she's another award-winning author. And her book is Behind Barbed Eyes, Behind Barbed Eyes. And uh, it's part of my sexual healing with Dr. Marissa series every last week of the month because over 50% of women incarcerated have had some kind of sexual abuse in their past. And if we can get to the bottom of that and really heal those places, then I'm sure that we will have less women making choices that ends up ends them up behind bars. So please do tune in next week so we can look for solutions in another area of darkness that is just waiting for our light. So tune in. Every Tuesday, naturally high noon, Thursday at 7, Saturday at 1 on my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive E-I. And remember, it's all about balance, peace in, and peace out.